someone asked me that earlier today. I don't have the exact number, but it's been the span of 10 years. Welcome back to my black universe. So I really want to get that get a opportunity to sit down with this young lady and have a conversation with her because she is very special in light of what's been going on in the medical fields. We know about Clayton County, we know about that being the most recent issue that has been highlighted. I want to get the perspective of someone who can help. Because she is a doula, she is the founder of Motivate Your Womb here at Rhode Soto Marketplace. Soto, Texas. We have Mo. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I truly appreciate it, especially the topics that we're going to be talking about. Yes, ma'am. And I'm glad you had time. I know you have a very busy schedule. You do a lot. A <laughs> you're, lot. You're a doula and a business owner. Yes. So yes. we both know what happened in Clayton County. Uh -huh. It's been, you know, talked about in, in the YouTube streets and you're a doula, I'm a parent, uh -huh. and we both were like, this is crazy. Yes. Now, first thing we want to catch you guys up and kind of get you up to speed on what's going on. So, a couple uh, was going in for a delivery. The, wa the wife's water broke. She went in. It's supposed to have been a standard vaginal delivery. Mm -hmm. There seemed to be, according to the reports, there seemed to be issues with the baby being delivered vaginally and that the shoulder got stuck somehow. And they said, let's do a C-section. Well, the details that were left out in some articles is that mm -hmm. during this the baby's head was separated from the body and that excessive the, force yes ma'am and the c-section the body was delivered by, by a c-section and the head was delivered vaginally now the issue is that the family didn't find out until much later when they decided to have the baby buried mm -hmm. the funeral home had to call them let them know that your child had been decapitated. So this is not something new in the medical field no. with black folk. Going in for what's supposed to be standard procedures. We're right. 21st century med right. medicine. These doctors are supposed to have all these degrees, all this education, all this experience, and then something goes awry for that, whatever reason. And there's an immediate attempt to try to quell it instead of saying, hey, we're sorry. This is what happened. We take accountability. Right. It's well, you know, we don't know. know what really yeah. happened. Uh -huh. It's like you were the doctor that was in the, in the room with me. Yeah. And I had a recent situation like that with my father, where the nurse came out. She was able to give great details on what's going on with my dad. But the doctor comes out. He's looking at the nurse like, "What I'm saying is right, right? That's is that what happened?" And that's alarming to me. You know, and that's yeah. that's my father, older man. But you have a newborn. Mm -hmm. And a first time mom. And a first time mom. Yeah. How many children have you helped deliver? Someone asked me that earlier today. I don't have the exact number, but it's been the span of 10 years. And the reason why I don't have uh, numbers is because it's very personal. Right. Everyone is different, but it's been a few. A lot of babies. We're talking span double about, digits, uh, yes. to triples, like, yes. like close to triple. Yes. So you've help mothers you, you you go with them if my understanding we've had conversations before mm -hmm. you spend the time with like you let so they can know you yeah and you can help comfort them in the process of childbirth right so because a lot of people don't know what a doula is it's like now trendy via social media mm -hmm. but we are not we're not anything medical we're trained if need be but we are there for the physical and emotional support and to let the birthing parents know their rights of what they can do because they they don't know something as simple as you don't have to be on your back to give birth but that's just been around for ages so people don't even know that they can switch different positions in the hospital it doesn't have to be a home birth mm. okay yes. okay so i know this mortified you when we talked you said i, I i'm not ready at the time you said yes. i'm not ready to, to have to deal with the emotions mm -hmm. that come with this mm -hmm. Me, I'm thinking, and it literally took me back to when my first son was born. He needed a urologist. He was born at Cook's, he needed a urologist at Children's Medical. Okay. We go to the urologist, had a procedure. On the way home, we know, I mean, he's crying. He's, he's, oh, okay, baby's home. He's 
been out for a while. Okay, maybe he sold his diaper, it's irritating. I go change the diaper. They didn't cauterize the veins. Oh. So as his heart is beating, it's pumping. Oh yes. Gosh. So he's in pain. East side of Fort Worth, children's in, in Dallas, over there off of Harry Hines, right? Mm -hmm. So we're skipping back. My dad was driving, was in back. I'm trying to keep my son calm because I know what's going on. I'm furious, my dad's furious, right. my wife at the time, she's furious. And back then, I didn't, you know, that's the thought of like, yo, that's medical malpractice. You, you're right. a doctor, you should know, like, right. okay, hey, blood's still pumping out of there. I need, I need to cauterize the surgical procedure. That immediately took me back to that. I think like, wow, that's, this has been happening. Mm -hmm. But like you said, we don't all rights. We don't immediately think like, yo, that's, as a professional, you are supposed to have certain sets of procedures right. in place to make sure this doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Emergency. How come you didn't follow that? And it wasn't that it, it wasn't that doctor. It had to be a female doctor who she said, "I'll take it. And I'll take care of it." And because she knew he was upset, I'm visibly upset. I don't know. I'm poker face. My dad's visibly upset, and they could feel they could read the room. Right. And so this still this is to remind you that he's he's 11 now. So this is still happening. This is over a decade later. We're still seeing these really? situations. So this is still, this has been going on. Now, mind you, yeah. I wasn't of the mind that I am now. You know, right. my black university didn't start until 2017. Okay. So this mindset, this this awakening, as we you know, say, woke, well, the media tries to do what it does with that, mm -hmm. didn't happen until later. But if you look back, and my friend we were talking, we look back, we're like, now we're wondering, did you do this on purpose? What was really going on when you did not follow through as a medical professional? Mm -hmm. And thankfully, you know, we were able to get back to my son. You know, he didn't perish. You know, he didn't die right, right. because I caught it. But you have a, a, a new mom. Right. You have a father who this is his this, this is his namesake. Mm -hmm. And you do something as heinous as to take the body mm -hmm. and the head. Swallowed it tight to make it seem mm -hmm. like it's mm -hmm. one whole baby. Mm -hmm. Turn around and say, hey, you should cremate the baby. There's no free autopsy because yeah. of the circumstance. Yeah. They cremate the baby. Have you ever had a situation where you had to kind of rescue a child where it's like, hey, Mo, the, the hospital tell me this. I don't know what to do. You have to, oh, no, no. I'll be there. This is what you can do. Yeah. So I have a, a few things um, came to mind. A few things came to mind when you hit me up too, because again, I was not ready because uh, it was just so many emotions. And it's like you said, why? why how did this happen today? Um, I first want to say that we have so many good doctors and nurses and hospital staff, and I understand everybody is not um, just medical this they have hearts you know their family have delivered so we do have good people but my thing is you have to, you're trained to know when an emergency happened who to call and when to call and that's my one of my biggest things but to answer your question um my i'll use my nephew for instance my great nephew he just turned one in june but my niece um she did everything that we were supposed to do i was her doula she did her mommy yoga, her mommy meditation. Um, so that way when she was able to give birth, her hips were able to open. She did a natural birth. But when we got to the hospital, you know, it's very noisy that it's like, push, 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 push. You know, they're just right. like, off oh, of this. And so I asked her, she said, um, Auntie, I can't push right now. And I said, okay, make sure you breathe. And when you're ready to push, you push. And so they were like yelling at her, like, cause, wow. it, cause it's a time thing, you know, we gotta get to the next baby. And this particular night, it was a full moon, it was just so many babies being born. And I, and she looked and she's like, Auntie, I said, you know, this was different cause this is my people, this is my, right, so my family. This is like, my mom adopted her when she was a, a baby. So this is my sister. And I said, when you're ready to push, you push. So then like five pushes, she pushed. Now in the midst of all that, um, the baby uh, swallowed a lot of fluid, and then they had to do, I didn't tell her this till months later, cause she was still new, new mom, and uh, they had to do CPR. So I get it, the baby goes through a lot to come through that birth canal. So I, while Kamati, her husband, was 
watching her, I was watching the doctor with the babies. What I noticed was, um, oh, everything is okay, everything's okay, but they're doing CPR. So had I not had the knowledge that I had, I wouldn't know. So I was watching, I was like, okay, I, I can see how this happens, but that makes me think, how long was this person gonna do CPR on this baby? Like, what, when do you notify the mom of like, oh, this is what's happening, this is what we're doing. So for this 20 and 21 year old to give birth, and you're, they're calling it a slow birth, and which is why they're saying that the shoulders got stuck. So this doctor, um, why didn't you call for help? Do you know how, the baby is fragile already, right? Yeah, absolutely. So to pull this baby head off, hmm. to, to pull this baby head off, that's, ah, man, that's so, a lot. So from my understanding, during the natural birth, the doctor's there to kind of help guide the baby out? Sometimes, sometimes, because what is, let's just say it was a big baby. And sometimes, and mind you, this, this, um, the parent was only 20. She's young. So the hips may not be, um, as spread as far as, uh, spread far apart as they needed to be. You know, we're not, and this is no blame, like, cause I don't want this to come out the wrong way. Black moms, we don't know to do the stretches and the yoga and the meditation. She was already stressed out. She asked for a C-section. They said no. So we don't know how tense her body was to hips and pelvic floor to be tight. So it could have been a reason why the baby shoulders may have gotten stuck. It's not, it happens. It's not abnormal. So I'm just so confused why she didn't use the proper techniques, the proper tools to pull the shoulders out. Why did you snatch this baby head so hard? And then I'm like, which is why I do what needed to be there. And I'm really questioning the hospital staff around because if you pull the baby head off, like, why did you still do the C-section for one part of the body and then make her deliver the other part? And never said anything. Never said anything. And still no help was called? So, so let me ask this. Because, like you said, doulas has become a trendy. Yes. How does a person properly vet a doula? I want to get a doula, mm -hmm. but I just want to be throwing money out there for somebody exactly. that they put up a whole bunch of, uh, put up a, a page, mm -hmm. it looks legit, they took some took mm -hmm. some of your stuff, yeah. and yeah. they copy and paste, oh, I'm a doula, you know, four thousand, you know, two thousand dollars, I'm a yeah. discount doula, mm -hmm. how does a person properly bet? So, you can um, Google, you, uh, you can Google, and now we have TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, so you can put nearby doulas. Um, you have your consultation, I had a doula consultation this morning. Um, the thing is, with doulas being trendy, all they're asking is, how many births have you done? I don't know. It's been it's been ten years. I I'm not. Some people keep up. They know the numbers, but um, I don't keep up with the numbers. But I can tell you the work that I do. I can tell you different situations. I can tell you that a doula isn't always fun peaches and creams because I have to watch a stillborn baby be born. I still have to do a special cleanse on this baby and I still have to watch this mother, true story, tell the hospital staff when they come in, shh, my baby is sleeping. I can tell you that. So, you know, I So, should they more so ask for the, not necessarily a number because, like you said, it could be a lot of traumatic right. births. But more so like the experience, like Yeah, just experiences, like, and, and a lot of times I tell people that anyway. Um, I've had one mom who had twins. She counted on a, a natural birth and had to have a C-section. I had a mom who everything was fine, and then all of a sudden the baby detached from the placenta. She had a stillborn. Uh, oh, and I have really great hospital and home births, you know, so everything was fine. Well, I had one client recently, like a month ago, the placenta was so high up after her giving birth, like the placenta took forever to come out. Mind you, the baby's still attached to the placenta. The cord wasn't, you know, cut. And she's in pain and we can see like the midwife tugging a little bit on the placenta and the mom is screaming and yelling. So it's just so many things. Um, and do and you know why people ask how many births you've done? Because they don't know what else to ask. 
What do you, what do I ask or do what? What, how do I know this is the right do what? And the person I had this one, she's like, honestly, I just don't even know what to ask you. So I came in, I said, well, let me just tell you my experience. Okay. Could you run down four questions to ask the door? Right. Um, yes. Do you specialize in hospital or home births? Because some doulas just only do home births. I do both because we're needed in both places. Right. Um, so that's one. And you can ask about um, postpartum. Like, because people, we focus a lot on birth, but not the postpartum and postpartum depression. And that's where it comes in. Mom can hurt themselves, hurt their babies. So postpartum, do you focus on that? And what should I be looking for? Um, and where are you located? Um, do you accept insurance? Um, and for um, what is like your main specialty within the birth? Okay. So guys, write that down. Ladies, write that down. Uh, so, because I, I want to, I don't want to take up too much of your time. We okay. know this is a heinous, a completely heinous situation. Yes. You you do what what you did. You try to put up a facade of a <clears throat> excuse me of a whole baby. Uh huh. That you, was that you, was evil. You immediately try to say, hey, there's no autopsy, no free autopsy, right. and cremate the baby. Then. The medical examiner says, hey, if it wasn't for the funeral home letting us know this child was, was dead, this newborn, we wouldn't have known because you didn't self-report. And then you try to turn around and say, yes, we did. And the medical yeah. examiner had to double down and say, no, you didn't. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's... <laughs> it's... it's I, I'm still confused. Like, I, I'm really... I'm really hurt. Um, I'm really confused, and or I just can't. I guess my mind is, what type of support are they getting right now? I know the social media. I understand the lights, the camera, probably some funding from people. But who, is she getting any type of therapy right now? She's in postpartum right now. Make no mistake about it. Even though this happened, she's still in postpartum. So what type of postpartum care is she receiving? It's like, where am I? And nobody's spoken about that. So. I didn't think about that. I, and that's another thing. So to my, I would say that, that I'm, I'm ignorant of that as well. That even though what happened, happened. She's in postpartum. She's in postpartum. She still can possibly be breathing. She still has milk in her breast. And what about the dad? What's, what support is he getting? He's so, entitled to support as well. So, I, my, 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 Mike is my oldest son, but our very first child was still born. She had five more twins. So, one thing that I can say I did wrong was I shut down. Yeah. I shut down. I wouldn't say it was wrong, though. Well, because she needs support. But you do too. And I didn't know how to, to balance that. Exactly. So, it wasn't wrong. Take. When I'll say this, when I'm a doula for and there's a two parent household, though I am hired to take care of this birthday parent, I still cater to the other parent or whoever is there. Whoever is they're saying is their right hand person, I cater to them as well. Because if I'm in a hospital room and then the birthday parent, something is happening or they're stressed out and you're standing there, it's like, we're, this is a team, this is a family unit at this point. We're a family unit, so we're gonna move as one. We need this hospital midwife group to know that we're a unit, so we can't, we're gonna move as such. So I'm gonna say, okay, I need you to go stand behind her. I need you to go get some more. I need, like, we're all gonna have our hands in the pot to make sure that this birthday parent is okay. But if you have a stillborn baby, you have to process your emotions too. You're in postpartum too with the birthday parent. So as a doula, your work doesn't stop it. Okay, the child's here, I'm out. It, it continues on to make sure that while the, while the, the parents or, uh -huh. or individuals involved are in chaos, you're like, hey, let me help you guys direct through this. Uh -huh. And I can get you to the fourth, but you gotta, you know, listen, and we're gonna work through it together. Yeah, as a unit, we are a family. I'm your, I'm your cousin at that point. I am. I wear family, and I tell, 
I'm your family at this point. So let's move through it. And even after the baby is born or anything, you know, after anything happens, um, postpartum, uh, I'm a different type of doula. I still focus on the mom the entire way, birth and postpartum. So, like I had one mom that gave birth last month, I don't go and, you know, babysit or do the night nightly doula duties. I don't do that. I'm like, so mom, how are you? You, not kids, partner, how are you? I need you to tell me, how are you? Because I, there's so many moms I ask, oh, well, I'm okay. And the baby's gonna hand the kids and this and this and this and I have to do this. And, no, 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 you, you. So, and it's the same with the birthday parent. Ask the father, how are you? Like I said, because we can allow ourselves to be distracted with, I have issues, but if I focus on everyone else, I don't have to deal with my issues. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's bad. Mm -hmm. okay. Bottle of emotions, you're not talking about it. And you have blocked this so you can focus on this. I think what you're doing is very healthy and very needed. Is there, is there like a, I don't want to say society, I don't want to make it seem like it, but is there a network of duels that you know of that you're like, that's my girl in West Coast. She's she's one. Of three. I'm, not, I'm not in West Coast. I can't make it that way. Or I'm busy. Yes. But you can call her. Yes. So uh, thank you for asking that. So let me just go through my team. Just one. That's one time I got team. Let's go through the team. So I, every time I do a doula consultation, they just think it's me. They think I'm just making all the magic happens. I can make some magic happen when you have a village. You can make a magical community. So you have myself, which I'm a doula and birth educator. Then you have, uh, her name is Cookie. She is based in Dallas and LA. And so, um, in the Bahamas. So she travels around, she does lactation support. So a lot of moms, black moms, um, black and brown, suffer from like trying to uh, breastfeed, postpartum. Um, they don't know that they deserve herbal baths as well. So Cookie does that. And then I have Kira, who's a clinical herbalist. She's really good with Asian medicine. So this would be good for uh, mom and dad or whoever the birthing parents are. Then we have um, Regina. Regina's a master herbalist. These are all black women, by the way. Master herbalist. And she's really good with moon, multivitamins, and much more. So if I can't make it happen, I'm making a call all around. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So how do they get in contact? With me, so they can go to Motivate Your Womb. My name is Mo, M-O-E. So M-O-E-T-I-V-A-T-E. -E. So you just add the E. Motivate Your Womb, and that's on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, um, and Google. Motivate Your Womb. And that's gonna be posted below in the description below the like button. Close that, what would you like to tell people? Um, just invest in yourself. Um, and it's okay that people may not understand what your, the new direction that you're going into, but just do it. If it works, great. If it doesn't, that's okay too. But you have to take the chance to invest in yourself. All right, family. This is Big Mom Black Universe. It's still peace. Black and power.